Morning guys and welcome to part 3 of my build series and my build arc on my North Africa diorama and before we start with the shipping on the two vehicles that I mentioned in the last update or the last installment I just wanted to show you guys what I've done uh, off camera since the last time we saw each other as you can see the diobase is now white I have added plaster a lot of plaster and I have uh, figured out where I want to put the well and the building and where the vehicles will be going and some other small changes that I have um, thought of that I want to have on the database. There will probably be a wall that will seclude this property on the right from the road and this tank as you can see is sitting on a small, small incline there and um, yeah, um, the road wheels and stuff are still not primed, the figures are still not primed or painted, so um, you haven't missed much other than me doing some, some plaster work on the diobase, but um, seeing that this plaster work took me a very long time and it not being very interesting, I decided to do it off camera. Um, the only thing that I want to tell you about the plaster work is the fact that I put two cork boards under this incline, like two pieces of cork board, in order to, well, ease the process of um, lifting the surface. Because if I had done this with plaster, it would firstly uh, have taken much longer to dry, and it would have been much, much harder to, to get it in the position I wanted it. So. I eased that bit with the cork board. I then added some track marks, which will probably not be visible here on the camera because of the whiteout, but they are here. Track marks all over the place. And I will be adding uh, some, some sand and smaller rocks and everything. I've got the big rocks on, but there will be some smaller rocks, maybe one or two more big rocks. And some vegetation, of course, and um, I will show you guys what I do about this on camera at a later stage. Um, I have started something that I will be showing you guys in more detail on the next one I do. But I have started work on a palm tree. Um, I've used a method um, Mike Cohn Campbell has uh, told me about and shown me. And... Um, I'm really happy with the way it looks right now, although it looks like a dildo ripped for her pleasure, as Devin would say. But um, I really like the look of it. And uh, I will be building one more, and this uh, second one I will be showing you guys in detail and in full length on here. So you can look forward to that. And the next thing I will have to do is uh, create the blob on top that holds the leaves and then figure out a way to make the leaves and once that's done prime it and paint it and I'll show you guys what I do about that in the video more in depth too so the next thing for me to do will probably be get out the airbrush and at least start painting the road wheels so I can get on with the process of finishing the two t uh, tanks what you will see next, though, will not be me priming stuff, but will probably be me chipping one of the two tanks. So, until then, see you guys in a bit. Well, guys, before we start the process of chipping, and before I talk to you guys about what I use for chipping, um, I wanted to show you guys something I will be adding, too. It's this... Um, Archer Fine Transfer uh, German World War II Fire Extinguisher Placards. Um, they will go on the fire extinguishers, of course, and um, I really like them. They are not cheap. I think I paid 10 euros for this. Um, I couldn't find them earlier, so, or I would have shown you guys these before. But I've used them before on some other projects. They are really cool. I like the Archer thing. Really detailed. You can actually read what stands on them. And yeah, they will go on the fire extinguishers on both vehicles. But let's now focus on the process of chipping armor vehicles. And 
The thing, though, is the desert vehicles would get chipped very, very heavily. And you normally would see the dark gray base color. And you will be seeing the dark gray base color in this as well. Um, my normal chipping color for if I chip normal vehicles in German colors, no matter what, is this. It's Vallejo model color um, chem black brown. Um, this is from a model set. If you buy it normally, it looks more along. Where is it? There it is. But I know where. It looks the same. <laughs> yeah, it's this one. I got two models because I chip a lot. But seeing that this is, as I said, a North African vehicle that would probably be um, painted in dark gray and then had field applied uh, dark yellow or desert yellow, um, the chipping effects need to be much more heavy or much heavier. And they should involve the base color, which is why I will be using this, which is uh, Mick Ammo uh, Dark Gray for the chipping of this vehicle. I'm, I'm not sure whether or not this will work to the extent that I would like it to work. But then again, the surface of this tank is still glossed, so I can still do some modification if I don't like the look that I achieve. The tools that I use for chipping, a fine brush and a sponge. Um, I use rather dense sponges. You can use sponges in any density available, but I prefer the rather dense ones because they allow you to chip bigger areas and make bigger chips as well as smaller chips once the paint gets taken out of the sponge more uh, radical. Um, we'll try to do some chipping with the base color first, which is a very dark grayish tone. We take our brush, uh, our brush, our sponge, dip it in the paint, and then remove excess paint. And then we take off the turret here. I'll start on the turret for you guys, because I can take the turret and you can see what I do much more easy. And then we want to pick the edges of the tank. This was too much already, but I can still modify this and want to dab it on with our sponge and we, we, we want to be careful we don't want to overdo it because although those vehicles in Africa get chipped heavily they wouldn't get chipped <laughs> no idea why my camera is acting up like this lately but I'm sorry for that guys I might have to change camera settings for future video endeavors and um, you want to take a the, the hatches and, and raised surfaces would get shipped much much more than other surfaces you just want to try to get the edge of your sponge with the paint because that allows much more control than when you have the middle of your sponge dipped in paint, like I did when I and don't be afraid to chip the decals or decal, I'm sorry Paul, decal it's decal I don't know, I had people make fun of me for saying decals, so I need to uh, work on me saying decal which is why I over pronounce it a bit and don't be too careful with the chipping here the thing is though that I just now realized that the make dark gray is not too far off from the chem black brown so I'm not entirely sure whether or not I will be doing a three layer chipping yet but that's a decision i can still make once it's time for me or once it would be time for me to add the third layer of chipping 
And as you can see, I just had way too much paint on the brush. Always try to remove excess paint, because if you have too much paint on there, you will make ugly, monstrous chips that you don't want to have. You want to focus on areas where the crew would um, touch the vehicle a lot. Rivets would, would, would be chipped more often than not because they are raised and allow the elements to to attach, attack the paint a lot more than flat surfaces. So rivets you want to look at chipping them. The turret basket, especially because of the fact that it's cheap sheet metal, you want to do some good work on the, especially the edges, the lower edges, because if the tank had stowage on the on the back plate, and the turret would move, the turret basket would probably scratch over the, the stowage, and thereby get heavily chipped. I know that there are people out there that will probably say, what he is talking about is total rubbish. But that's just what I think would happen. So if there are people out there that know it better than me, please tell me. I want to learn stuff. I always want to learn more, get better, improve my skill. So let me know if there's anything you notice that I either say is wrong or do is wrong. So yeah. Um, as you can see, it's a very, very uh, time consuming thing to do chipping. So I will probably not be doing the entire tank on camera or the entire turret on camera, that is. But I will come back once it's done and I'll show you guys the finished turret. So, see you guys in a bit. As promised, here are the final results of the chipped Panzer III turret, at least for the, the first merry-go-round of chipping. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, it's a bit heavy in some areas. It's not as heavy in other areas. I like the way how the dacles have been... Uh, Toned down a bit by the chipping, not on this side in particular, but in this side here especially. Um, I may have to do a bit more, seeing it's an Africa core vehicle, but for now, I like the way it looks, especially when you look at the trail that I have here on top of the turret, where the uh, the crew will walk, right here. Let's see, that's the crew. Like, when the crew gets out of the hedge, they would walk there to get off the turret. Especially the, the commander and the, yeah, the commander, because the gunner and the loader would go up through the hedges on the side. I chipped the gun. I don't like this chip here very much, but yeah, it's there now. I like the way I chipped the model brake. Looks okay. I just saw that I need to chip a bit of this machine gun here. That's pristine yet, so I need to do some on this. But yeah, overall, I like the way this looks. And now we'll get on with the chipping of the main tank. So I'll talk to you guys once that's done. See you guys in a bit.